blessings again today. So our first pose that we're doing is standing in Padasana. So stand in the middle of your mat. Let's just stand with your feet hip width apart. And make sure that you align the outer corners of your feet with the outer edges of the mat so that your feet are slightly pigeon-toed. And then spread the soles of the feet and become aware of the ball mount of the big toes. Anchor them into the floor. You will feel that your toes are lifting when you do that. Then release the toes but keep that grip of the ball mount of the big toe down to the floor. Then you find the ball mount of your little toe. Find the outer corner of your heel on the inner corner of your heel. So four points of your feet that you are really pushing into the floor to get balance, even balance. Then just think of lifting the whole front body up. So kneecaps up, front thighs up, abdomen in and up. You know all that uh, actions. Broaden the collarbones and bring the shoulders back. Lift the crown of the head to the ceiling. Then from your shoulders, visualize a waterfall falling down to your hips. So the front body is lifting and the back body is going down. Now roll your shoulders back and stretch into your fingertips. Keep the action in the legs. Lift the front, take the back down. So from the buttocks, you take the buttock flesh down to the heels. Keep on extending the crown of the head up to the ceiling. And for a moment, close your eyes here. Can you find the balance even on the two feet? Do you feel that your right leg, left leg is evenly weight bearing? Place the hands in a must and for a moment, just press the palms into each other. Keep the eyes closed and do you have more balance now? Even pressure of left hand into right hand, right hand into left hand. Now find that inner stillness and that perfect balance between right and left. Also, as much as you go down, you go up. So the balance is not just right and left, it's, it's up and down too. Inhale, as you exhale, open the eyes, release the hands and relax for a moment. Okay, so now we're going to work on the floor. So you're going to lie on the floor and you need a strap and let me just show you the sequence that we're going to go through. So first of all my strap is waiting for me. I lie in Sukta Tadasana. You get that same balance. Into Pava Muktasana. From there I've got my strap ready and now I put the strap over the ball mount of the foot. And I just lift my foot, so I bring my shin uh, perpendicular to the floor. And then from there we want to stretch the hamstring, so just observe. I'm opening that leg with maximum extension of the hamstring. We stay there for a moment, and then we're going to release and do the other side. Okay, so you get on the floor, have your strap close by, and then extend your right leg, left leg. Stretch into both heels and to get as much of the back body to the floor. So really open the back of the knees, stretch into your heels, try to get the back thighs to the floor and then roll the shoulders back and extend into your fingertips exactly how you did when you were standing now. Pushing into the ball mouse of the big toes also. Inhale and bring your right knee to your chest. Wrap your fingers around the shin or the knee and bring that knee closer to the right armpit and relax the right foot and extend into your left heel. So make the left leg very active still. Try to push the left back thigh to the floor. It's difficult now that you're lifting the right leg, but aim for that. Take a breath. Then you're going to get your strap as you keep the knee and the thigh close to the body. Put the strap around the ball mount of the right foot and just lift the foot to the ceiling. So your foot is to the ceiling but your thigh is close to the body, as close as you can. Be there for a moment, activate your left leg and then straighten your right leg but try to keep it as the thigh as close as you can to your body. So you're opening the hamstring, pushing to the ball mount. You can see the big toe ball mount. 
and just work according to your ability. If you've got very tight hamstrings, rather bend your left leg and put the foot on the floor. So work there quietly, releasing and lengthening that hamstring muscle. And remember, if you've got time, you stay as long as you can. Muscles take time to release. It's not an instant action. And now from here, inhale as you exhale, bring the leg back to the perpendicular and bring the foot to the floor and extend. Back to Supta Stretch. Feel the difference between the two legs now. Reflect. Then bring your left knee to your chest. Hug the left knee to the chest. So relax the left foot. Extend into the right leg. Try to get as much of that back of that right leg to the floor and extend into the ball mount of the right foot. Chest is still open. Face is still soft. Inhale as you exhale, strap around the ball mount of the foot and you bring the knee closer to the body and the foot to the ceiling. Keeping the shin as uh, per, uh, perpendicular to the floor. Now put the energy back into the right leg and then slowly start straightening that left, foot, uh, the left leg. Remember if your hamstring is tight, you bend your right leg. Open behind the leg without any violence. You don't work with ahimsa or with himsa. Himsa is violence. You work with ahimsa which is non-violence. Taking care of our body. With the breath, you release more and more, keeping the chest open, elbows slightly out to the side to get the shoulder blades in, abdomen to the spine. And then leg back to 90 degrees, release the strap, and for a moment reflect. Now you can just roll over to the side if you cannot see me so that I can show you what's coming. I'm bending both legs. We're doing Garudasana on the floor. So I'm wrapping my leg over and then interlocking if I can. And now look at my standing leg, which is the one on the floor, I'm on the heel. Hips are level, I take my arms up. My left leg is underneath, so my left arm goes on top. Elbows up and hands away. So I bring the elbows in line with the shoulders and the hands in line with the elbows. Abdomen to the spine. So we're doing our eagle pose lying down. So you're on the floor again. Uh, bend your legs. Extend the spine. You can do a little pelvic tilt here. Now take your right leg up and wrap it around that left leg. Try to bring the foot around. And you bring your left heel to the floor. Pose up. Now put your hands on your hips and Make note that the hips are level to the ceiling now and when you're standing this is problematic because you can feel that that right hip wants to come up. Take your hands, fingers to the ceiling, stretch, abdomen to the spine because the left leg is at the back bottom, the left arm goes on top, interlock deeply. Now lift your elbows up to the ceiling in line with the shoulders and hands in line with the elbows. And just look to the ceiling. One eye on either side of the arm. And release. And both legs bend. And this time you're wrapping your left leg around your right leg. Your right heel goes to the floor. Make a note of your hips that are beautiful and level. Now just think for a moment. Hands up to the ceiling. Which arm should be on top? You can feel your right heel is into the floor, right arm on top. Elbow up, hands away towards the wall ahead of you or behind you if there's a wall. Abdomen to the spine, even breaths. Okay, soft. And release. Both feet to the floor, take a breath in, take a breath out. And roll over to the right, come up to seated and come up to standing. So your mat is clear. Now, I don't know how your setups are at home. If you need support for balancing to get a chair or you've got a wall. So it depends on what your setup looks like. 
Now we're going to do the eagle pose standing up. And let me quickly show you how we're doing. So I bend. Definitely easy if you bend your knees in the beginning. I wrap my thighs around each other as deeply as I can and I try to hook my foot around. Now remember what I said about the hips. We've got to level them. And then from there, you're going to slightly straighten your legs and you're just going to be there for a moment. And then we change. Okay. So stand in Tadasana. Roll your shoulders back. Your support will be towards your right. I'll do mirror image. Bend your knees. Now you wrap your left leg around that right leg. Deep. Bring that thighs to really meet. And bring the foot around the calf. And now bring your left hip slightly back. And if you've got balanced hands and namaste, now find the ball mound of the big toe, press into it on your right foot. Tailbone is in, and there's balance and quietness in the body. The gaze is soft and straight on the legs slightly. And the more you intertwine your legs, the more they will be balanced. There's a twining and then a stretchy. And then release. Okay. Put your chair to the other side or have a wall on the other side. Turn around if you need to. Tadasana. Take a breath in, breath out. Ground your two feet. Ground the ball mound of your left foot and wrap that le the right leg around. Remember, bend your knees first. Wrap it around deeply. Right leg back. Chest open. Tailbone in. Straighten the legs slightly. Ball mount up your left foot firmly into the floor, suck the thigh muscles to the bone and place the hands in Namaste for a moment. And have your gaze soft, relax your jaws, lengthen your spine and release. We go back to the first side and we see if we can incorporate the arms now. So you intadasana, bend your knees. Left leg over right leg. So remember, left leg over right leg. Your right leg is your standing leg. So your right arm is going to be on top. Elbows forwards, hands up. So the more you extend into your, your arms and into your legs, the more you're going to get your balance here. Quiet, even breaths. Remember to level the hips. Ball mount of the big toe. And release. Back to Tadasana. Deep breath in, full breath out. We tend to stop breathing when we focus so much on balancing. And we also tend to harden the face and the jaw and the tongue. And eventually we want to make that balance something with joy and with Okay, so other side. This time your left leg is your standing leg, so remember left arm on top. Okay, bending the legs. Your ball mount of your left foot is already pushing into the floor. Interlock. Bring that right leg back so that the hips get level. Now really get the ball mount of your left foot firmly into the floor. Hands in front of you. Bringing the left arm over the right arm, deep interlock, elbows forwards, hands up, abdomen to the spine, stretching into the legs, stretching into the hands, quietness, even breaths, sense of quietness, and release. Breath in, breath out. If you've got a wall in front of you, place your hands into the wall, otherwise over the, the back rest of the chair. And just get your body all ironed out for a moment. Okay, so now you need a chair. I've got my chair into the wall, and I've got a blanket over my back rest because it's just more comfortable. Tadasana, and then you're going to lift your leg. 
but you've got to try to get your standing leg directly underneath your feet. Okay. And then I've got to pull this leg firmly into its own hip, but extend into the ball around of the foot also. And we're going to take the hands up to the ceiling and stretch. Okay, so let's do it together. Get your setup ready. Stand in Tadasana. You're going to take your right leg up first. So remember, try not to have the feet too far back. We all tend to make that mistake. And I'm not there to correct you. So take the foot a little bit more forward than you think you should. And make sure that the two feet are in line with their buttocks, buttock bones. Now push into the ball mount of the foot into the wall. Push into the ball mount of the foot on the floor. And now I want you to think of sucking the outer thigh muscles to the bone. Bring that compactness over the whole pelvic area and the thighs. That will help you to stay so well balanced. Stretch into your fingertips, extend. Bring your buttocks down to the heels, especially your left one, and reach for the sky with your fingers. Pushing into the wall with the ball mount of the right big toe. Get your balance, get your breath. And inhale as you exhale. Step down and back to Tadasana. Get your breath. Take the left leg up. So your right foot should be in the right spot already. Left leg up. Drop that left hip. Suck the thigh muscles to the bone. Ball mounts of the feet very active. And then up you go. Stretching to the fingertips. Extend, don't look down, that is a disease. We must look forwards. Have lightness in our minds and our souls. Open behind both knees, suck the thigh muscles to the bone. And release, let them go. Okay, so the chair can go away for a moment. And we're going to go from here into Vrikshasana, which is the tree pose. And I want you all to get a block or a very steady hook to stand on. Okay, so we've got the block in the middle of the mat. We do together. Place your left foot on your block. And you're going to stand up and just lift the, left leg, uh, the right leg. Now you will feel that the hip is sort of dragging and we tend to sit into the hip of the block that's standing on the floor, of the, the foot that's standing on the floor. Now I'll just come down again and now watch the action here. As I go up, I really activate my standing leg. I push into the block, I suck the thigh muscle to the bone, and that levels the hips. And already there's no strain in the pose. And then I can swing this foot freely and I can lift. And I've got balance because my standing leg is so active. So the, uh, the left foot is on the block. I've got my ball mount of my big toe really active. I lift, and as I lift, I activate my legs and already my, but my um, your right leg will become light. Feel how, when you activate your, your left leg, how the lightness comes and the pelvic area becomes balanced. Now find the freedom and the hinge. Can you just swing your foot here? And then lift the knee. So you've got the shin just hanging, your thigh muscles to the bone, you feel the extension upwards. Get your quietness, make the ball mount of the standing big toe very active into that block. Last quiet moment here. And then release and change. So you've got your block now ready for the right foot. Now, as I stand on the block with my right foot, I already activate the foot. The ball mount of the big toe, the whole foot is firmly into the block. There's that lifting up action and the sucking of the outer thigh muscle to the bone that brings lightness on my left side. I can just swing this foot here. And then bring the knee up. Relax. Feel the pelvic area very stable, so you suck the muscles to the bone. And in that action, you feel lightness coming into your pose. 
Roll around off the big toe. Roll around off the big toe. And release. Now this should help you with your balancing of your tree pose. If you need your chair close to you, you get your chair. Or the wall. Standing Tadasana. Place the hands on Namaste. And already feel that first Namaste of the day. You were completely, completely balanced. Four corners of the feet. You're not just on your heels or on the toes or on the heels. There's a balance. Feel your body leaning into a wall and lift up to the ceiling. And then place your left foot high up into your right leg. The ball mount of my right foot is very active. Take that left knee well out to the side. Extend that inner groin to inner knee. Now the sucking of the thigh muscle to the bone. So your standing leg. Suck that thigh muscle to the bone. Bring it in. Bring it in. Bring it in. Then place the hands in Namaskar. If you need to hold your chair, you do. Don't look down. Find a spot to concentrate on and have the gaze soft and blink the eyes. Don't be with scary eyes. And if you've got your balance, you take your hands up to the ceiling, stretching into the fingertips. Thigh muscle to bone. Ball mount of the big toes. Stretch, stretch, stretch and extend. Reach for the sky. Bring the hands in front of you and release. And just have softness in your legs for a moment. Go to the other side. Okay, so your chair is ready for you, but you don't really need it because your balance will be in your body. So anchor the ball mount of that right foot firmly to the floor. So side thigh muscle to the bone. Already feel that feeling that you had when you were standing on the block. There's already lightness on the right leg. Put that foot into the thigh. The sole of the foot goes into the thigh. The thigh goes into the sole of the foot. Get that moment of perfect balance between the two actions. Now really think pelvic area. Suck thigh muscle to the bone. Ball mount of the big toe. Abdomen to the spine. Hands and namaste. And the gaze soft. And remember, not down. Blinking slightly. Looking at some spot that is, sli is, is in line with your eyes. Or slightly higher. Remember to open from the inner groin to the inner knee. And when you've got your balance, you can take your hands up to the ceiling. Nothing is a must. You go according to your ability or the mood of the day. Some days we can balance, some days not. Stretching into your fingertips. Reach. Even breaths. Active, active thigh muscles. Soft faces, happiness. And then from there, reaching and releasing. Even breaths. Well, you get your breath, I'll show you the next pose. So, I'm going to use my chair into the wall for stability. And we're going to work on Ardha Chandrasana. And we're going to do three times on each side. So, when I step towards the chair, my hand will be in line with the little toe side on the seat of the chair. My leg straight, my hand under my shoulder. And you're going to, from a bent knee, lift and open up. If it's in it for you, you can take the hand up, you flex that back foot. And then you step down quietly, doing it three times. Each time when you get up there, two breaths. So let's start together. Up you go, hand under the shoulder, ball mount of the big toe, thigh muscles to the bone, flex and open that groin, flex that top foot. Two breaths once you are there. Get your balance, stretch and extend. Open your pelvis, open your chest, open your heart. And then down. And do two more in your own time. Once you're there, can you lift your top leg more? Can you push into the heel more, into the ball mount of the foot more? Step them together, get 
your breath and turn around. So make sure that your prop is stable when you're using it. It shouldn't move. So I don't have a wall here, don't imitate. Okay. So get your positioning and three thumbs in your own thumb. Make sure that your distance is right and your hand is under your shoulder in line with the little toe side when you go up. And your pelvis unfolds. Lift your bottom leg, or your top leg more and more and more. Warm out big toe, thigh muscles to the bone. Get your breath. Remember two breaths every time you're up there. And you will find that one leg balance is better than another leg, than the other leg, the other leg. We are all different on both sides. And you will note that there's nothing that you know that to show you those differences. Point them out to you. Discovering the black holes, the dark holes in your, in your practice, in your body. And the yoga brings the light there. When you're in the pose, remember to really extend the legs. After your second time, feet forward, step your, or third time, step your feet together, get your breath. And you're now going to possibly need blocks. If you prefer to do the pose with a chair, have a chair handy. Um, you're going to go into Trikonasana, and from Trikonasana, you go into Adha Chandrasana. I've got the block there for if I need it. Stand in the, just observe, let me first show you. Uttida Trikonasana. Finding the warm out of the big toes. Remember, I start with a bent leg. You use your block if you need it. Fingers as a little toe side like you did with the chair. Open up, open up, open up. And extend. And when you step back, you exit via Okay. Locks on either side of the mat. Standing Tadasana. If you need the legs. Middle fingers together. Bend the knees and jump the feet apart. Extend into your fingertips. Now turn your, let's do mirror image. Turn your right leg out, left toes in. Inhale, as you exhale, extend into your Trikonasana. A beautiful preparation for Adhasandrasana. Half moon pose. And then bend the knee, place the hand, remember, under the shoulder, little toe side. On the block, on the chair, on the floor, depends on your ability. And you roll to look to the front, eventually you look up to the ceiling, that is what you aim for. Now stretch into that top leg, open behind the knees, rotate the abdomen, stretch into the top hand, otherwise keep it on the hip. Exit via the Triponasana. And feet forwards, hands on the hips. Make sure that you're not too close to a wall. Okay, get your breath. Turn your left foot out, right toes in. Arms out to the side. Inhale as you exhale, Adhas Chandrasana. Or Trikonasana first. And then bend the knee, walk forward, hands under the shoulder, hand under the shoulder, stretch, lift, extend, open up, flex the foot, get your breath, find the ball mount of the big toe, and now make the thigh muscles to the bones, stretch, make everything alert and alive in the body. Lift that top leg more and more and more. And remember, eventually the gaze goes to the top hand. And then through Trikonasana, up you come, feet to the front, and step or jump your feet together, and get your breath. Okay, so now um, we're going to unwind, and we unwind uh, through Kalita Pranani and Sitabanda on a block, which we quite often do. Now, just a little interruption here. If you plan to do Shishasana, now is the moment. 
So what you can do first is just to get prepared for the Shishasana. It's just go into Prasarita for a moment. And then after that, you do your headstand or your Shishasana and then you can continue. Okay. There's actually one more pose that I want to put in. So let me show you quickly. Because it's also a balance and it's seated and from there we'll start relaxing. So you're going to be on the floor in Dandasana. From here, I'm going to bring my feet in and hold the big toes. Now you've got to wiggle and find the balance on the two buttock bones. And from there, staying with the ability as much as you can on your buttock bones and bring your chest towards your straight legs. And then from there, come down and stretch the legs. If you are very stiff, you're going to find that your legs will go wide and that is also okay. Gradually, through practice, they get closer and they can stay. Uh, they can get together more. Okay, so Dandasana. Bring your legs in and take hold of your big toes with three fingers on each hand. Okay, now wiggle, wiggle, wiggle and be on your buttock bones. Now try not to sway too much back when you go up. Buttock bone awareness, left and right buttock bone evenly balanced, left and right buttock bone evenly balanced. Stretch into your ball mounds of your big toes. The arms are straight, bring the chest towards the legs, chest towards the legs, legs towards the chest. Remember, if you're stiff, your legs will go wide. Get your breath here. Ubaya Padangustasana. So extend the chest towards the ceiling. And bring the legs down. Stretch them. Get your block. Let me show you where you're going to go now. You're going to be on the block floor. Set your bandha for a moment with bent legs. You can place, place the block at a much lower level if needed for you. And from there, while you're here, let me just show you. I'm going to interlock my hands here, then find the block and go up in Viparita Karani for a moment. Okay, so on your back, bend the legs, lift the pelvis, and bring the block underneath the sacrum. So those two little indentations on your back is underneath there. Evenly balanced. And now, just stay. Feet firmly on the floor. Find the ball mounts of the big toes. Feet should be slightly pigeon toed. Abdomen soft. And hands relaxed. Take breath in, breath out. Interlock your hands. And roll more on top of your shoulders. Those of you that can easily extend your legs, you extend into your heels, flexing the feet. Change the interlock of the hands. And for a moment, just feel while, while you're here. Feel as if you're lifting actually off the block. So the body is acted still. And then, if you feel worried about balance, lower your blocks. Otherwise, just hold your black block. You might have to place it a little bit lower down on your back. Bend your knees up to the ceiling and straighten your legs. And fall off the story, so make sure that your block is on the right position. Find your right spot, 90 degree angle, push into the ball mounts of the big toes, stuck the thigh muscles to the bone. And for a moment, relax here. Stretch the legs more, take three more breaths. After the third breath, hold the block, carefully put the feet down, lift the pelvis off the block, lengthen your spine, and place yourself for Shavasana. So you stretch into your legs and then you release your legs from your hips. You press on your elbows, bring the chest in and then turn the palms to the ceiling, chin slightly to the chest. And this is where you are going to relax for as long as you need. And it was wonderful practicing balancings with you again together.
you can approach all of the sub, uh, all of the topics from so many million corners. And thank you for sharing this investigation with me. Namaste.